We are so close to getting this trailer ready to go so we can go out for another night. Now, the one big thing that's missing is the waterproofing. So that's what we're gonna work on starting right now. The material I decided to use to waterproof this whole trailer is called EPDM. It's a roofing material that typically is used on RV roofs or flat roofs in a, in a building of some kind. What it's not typically used for are vertical walls. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drape one EPDM sheet continuous over the whole top. That'll be kind of normal because the roof will be supporting the weight. The next thing we're gonna do is have two side pieces, one on each side that are not connected. What you would normally use to attach EPDM is either an a water-based adhesive or a solvent. The temperature in here right now is 33 degrees. I tried an experiment last night with my heater here that I got a little while ago to get this garage heated up to the temperature that you need for the solvent or the adhesive, which is 40 degrees for the solvent, 50 degrees for the adhesive. And it, it only budged a couple degrees. It's not insulated, it's a big space, it has an attic and all that. So heating this space is very difficult. So we're kind of forced to go with the, what's called the mechanical attachment route. Even though it's tear resistant, puncture resistant, and all that, if I put a screw through it to hold it up, is that gonna then rip off? We're gonna have to find out. Just trying to give this uh, every opportunity not to rip. side on underneath the top. <laughs> Want to have this overlapped just right with the side being covered by the top so that any water runoff is going to go right down the side. and a quarter with a uh, fender washer. I was a little concerned that it might catch on the rubber and start twisting it and whatnot, but I'm right in, no problem. Okay, we got both sides for the tops. We are now secured. They're not screwed all the way uh, because I want to leave the corners and edges for, you know, last to kind of get things matched up right. But I want to start worrying about these front edges, getting those flashed in. I got the front mostly, mostly done. I'm only going part way up because I want to be able to do the corners last after everything else is kind of in place and tied in. So I'm going to move on to the sides now. So here's my problem I got to deal with. I got to get this cut right down here somewhere so that it can slip in fully around the fender. It takes time to get it right. Sleepless days and nights. We just need a little more. Just a little time. All right, so we got that cut so it goes around the uh, fender now. See, it's covering all the wood in there. The bit here that's overlapping the lights, I'm not going to worry about, nor am I going to worry about this kind of flapping that's going on here. Because right about here is where the hinges are for the door. So this is going to have to get cut here anyway. That being said, on this side, you can see here there is a bit of a bubble. Um, this is just it flapping out, but here is actually like a legitimate extra bit of uh, material. And I don't think that's related to the fender. I've been tugging on it and trying to figure out if it's over there. I don't think that's the problem. 
I think the problem actually is over on this side. I think it needed to be pulled a little bit tighter. Um, but, you know, that's, this is the way it is. Um, I don't think there's anything at this point that I can do about it. So we're just gonna have to live with it. And at some point, I'm coming to the conclusion that I'm gonna have to run a um, strip along the bottom and get that screwed in so that there's no way that air can kind of come up and try to blow the, the material off. I, I, know, I don't think it's gonna be able to, but I think by having a strip down here, it'll just reduce the amount of, you know, kind of bad load and, and pressures that are happening on this to kind of keep it from ripping over time. So when we put that strip on, maybe we can get this to kind of tone down a little bit. So what to do next? I don't know what I'm gonna do next. Whatever you see in the next scene is a surprise to me. <laughs> well, we can get back in our trailer again. Okay, so we got some figuring out to do here. We basically have to come up with some sort of method. Where we're going to be able to waterproof this outside. Obviously, we have the rubber here, but you know, let's say this is flat up against this. The water is going to be dripping right down into the door, potentially just going right into the door. So what I want to do is have some sort of lip here, some sort of molding maybe, that um, will allow the water to get pulled away from the wall and then have like a drip edge so it'll it'll come away from the door. Now, this does kind of violate the way you want to do any sort of water runoff because I'm gonna have something on top of this and the water could potentially run down behind that thing and you know get down in there. But it's wood being screwed to rubber. We got this strip edge now around here. So this will protect from the top any water coming down, and this will protect when we're driving any water from going directly into the sides. And we're probably gonna have to paint in here and do something like that, um, just to give it a little bit extra water protection. But I'm not gonna worry about that for right now. I think as long as it's uh, as cold as it is right now, um, it'll be fine. So I'm just gonna continue this molding across the top here, continuing the drip edge with the little uh, the cut in the middle there. going to give you a tour of the trailer so you can see you know basically everything in detail as it is right now before uh, you know we continue on the trailer is completely covered with the EPDM the lights are on and ready to go I just need to get uh, somebody to come out and inspect the trailer and it should be roadworthy the wiring is tied into the inside of the trailer through just a simple hole in the floor the exterior walls of the trailer are pretty much set. We just need to get the excess trimmed off and get the corner flashing fastened. The coupler in the front is all good to go. I have the safety chains and I have my wiring harness there. I will be cleaning this up a little bit with some zip ties. The wiring runs back from the coupler and the inside of the C channel and it just goes inside to the trailer using a simple hole. You notice that the bottom is not treated yet, the bottom of the wood. I'm going to be using liquid rubber to try to treat it. The sides where the main door was are all covered now. I'll be opening that up soon. And in the rear doors, they can be opened 
and uh, this is the inside of the trailer. There's plenty of room in here. The inside walls are almost completely done. You can just see a few patches where the insulation is showing and the rear wall needs to have those temporary bolts put in place so I can remove it and install it. I can sit in the trailer just fine. I have plenty of room. It's a little chilly right now because there's no heat. These vents in the back are for passive ventilation so that uh, we have enough oxygen. Doors are relatively easy to open but they don't have anything yet holding them so that they don't reclose. They also need handles on them because when they're fully closed it's very difficult to open them from the outside. There's very little left to do, it's just a lot of detail work before we get to sleep in this thing. I guarantee you 100% that the next video we're going to do a test run. We're going to sleep in this thing. It probably will just be in the driveway, but it's definitely going to happen. Um, I'm going to try to, I'm going to use my propane heater to basically preheat the inside of this thing, and then we're going to get in it, go to sleep, all the heaters and everything will be off and we'll see you know, how well does it retain heat through the night. I hope you've enjoyed this journey as far as we've gotten so far and I hope you continue to watch. Um, really looking forward to both you know, trying this out after it's done and making improvements along the way. I'm excited to get to doing the solar work on this so we can actually get a heater in here and uh, you know, eventually get to the cooktop and the, the counters and all that kind of thing, the sink. It's gonna be a load of fun. It's gonna be really interesting to find out you know, how this all works. So stick with us, subscribe if you haven't, and we'll see you in the next one.